<laughs> Hi, I'm Catherine and I'm from Truncan Abella Gardens here on the lovely south coast of New South Wales and today I'm interviewing Brad, Brad McNeish from Brad MC Wedding and DJ and he's here with me today to talk a little bit about how to prepare yourself for that inevitable shopping trip of hiring a DJ and MC for your wedding. Welcome Brad. Good morning Kaz, how are you? Really well, thank you. How are you? Good, good, thank you. That's good. So if you're if you're happy, um, we can just sort of dive straight in here. Sure. And uh, how about you just tell us a little bit about who you are and your experience in the industry? Okay. Well, my name is Brad Brad McNeish. Um, I've been a wedding DJ and um, MC for oh, best part of over twenty years now. Um, in Queensland and also in New South Wales, so I've been involved with the wedding industry for quite some time. Um, I've been involved with the music industry most of my life. I'm also a, a singer with a band in the local area as well. So a bit of diversity there with music and also with dealing with people. I've also had my own television program of all things that was totally unrelated to this, uh, but it was about motorcycling. So as far as dealing with people is concerned, that's probably my, my biggest strength, my forte is dealing with people. questions here which will help potential brides and grooms and people getting married to be able to get clear on what they need to know before they um, choose, before they even pick up the phone to call anybody, how they can identify what it is that they're actually looking for, what their preferences, what their, their needs are and then we can just go through the list of um, how that will unfold for them. Mm -hmm. Yep, no problem. Okay, so that brings us to question one. Even before a, a, a shopper um, contacts a DJ or an MC, what's the first thing and then probably a subsequent three or four things that they need to consider when they're choosing a DJ for their wedding? All right, well, the first thing that they probably should do is plan early. Plan early. I mean, if you, you know, when you know you're getting married, so you know when the date is already for, the best thing you can do is to as I said, plan early and then shop around. I mean, look for the sort of music that you want. If you're obviously, if you're after a DJ and if you're after an MC, the sort of MC service that you require. Do you require a full service? You need someone that, that needs to be there from the beginning of the ceremony right through to the end of the reception, or you just want someone there that's just going to do the announcing of your, yourself coming in, your wedding party coming in, when the cake's cutting, that sort of stuff. So plan early and decide what you want. It's your day, so you decide what you want. If you don't know necessarily what you want, let's just say you haven't been to too many weddings um, or you've been to weddings that have got different different structures for their um, for their music and emceeing, how do you get clear on what you want? If you haven't got a clear picture and you're not quite sure how it all works, what's the best way to be able to do that? Shop around again, as I say. I mean, I bring a few different DJs and MC services. I'll, I shall give you an example. It's a current example. I had a young lady ring me up the other day and she said, look, I'm looking for an MC for my wedding. What do you charge? And I said, well, that depends on what you want and how long you want me for. She said, well, it's the first time I've ever got married. And I thought, well, that's, yeah, well, I've only been married once myself, so I'm in the same boat. But she needed to know how long it was going to take to go through everything. Um, how long would I need you for? And I said, well, it all depends on what you want from that wedding. But I, well, the best thing to do is to get a quote and speak to the as many people as you can. And if you get a rapport with that person, if they seem to be able to um, get in touch with what it is that you want, then go with that person. But I mean, that's what you need to do is to ring around and speak to as many different people as you can. And the best way to do that is to start early, start early. And that way you're not running around at the last minute trying to find somebody. Prepare. Oh, my words are just getting all muddled this morning. <laughs> in preparation for um, interviewing you, I've done a little bit of research online and I just Googled how to choose a DJ and how to choose a, a wedding MC. And you know, there are key questions which I then have um, not only incorporated into this interview, but I have um, there'll be a, a written blog that accompanies this video. So, like, there's a <laughs> whole list of suggestions online as to what you could what questions to ask and who to look yep. out for yeah mm-hmm yes awesome all right uh, 
so what do you need to ask your potential candidates when making um, first co um, contact with them? So if you could maybe just give me the top three or four questions that are really important when you're making that first phone call. You're saying, hey Brad, I've never done this before. I'm not really sure what I'm looking for. But to save time for everybody, what are three mm -hmm. or four questions that are really imperative to ask? Right. Well, obviously uh, the first one is your availability. I mean. Find out whether your DJ or your MC, whatever you're having for that day, is available, obviously, for that day. Um, it does come into it, and I mean, it does come into everybody's reckoning when they are working at their wedding. Ask for a price. Ask for a price and ask for a price up front. Because, I mean, most people have to budget for their weddings these days because weddings are so expensive. So find out exactly what it is it's going to cost you for that day. And thirdly, find out what sort of music that they do. I mean, you might have an eclectic taste in music. You might want some particular sort of music. If your DJ hesitates on that, oh, well, that's not the sort of music that I play, move on. Find someone who does play your sort of music or is prepared to get hold of your sort of music for you for that day. Like I said, it's your day. So you should have what you want. But they're the most, probably the most important things, availability, price and flexibility. Yeah, awesome. yeah. that's a really great starting place. Um, so when you, uh, you know, you might have a list of three or four DJs that you're running through in the local area that are going to be able to supply your venue, you know, and that, I guess that's another thing is to make sure about their um, uh, proximity to your venue. Um, how can you tell if this DJ is, it, they might be saying all the right things, but how can you really tell whether or not they're going to be a good fit for your wedding day? Yeah, very good question. I think uh, testimonials come into it a lot. I mean, if that particular DJ has a, a website or a Facebook page or whatever, go into that and have a look and see what they've done in the past. And quite often, a good DJ or MC will ask for testimonials from their previous clients and say, can you please make a comment in regard to how you thought my service was and leave that on my website or leave that on my Facebook page. Have a look at testimonials and see if these people have worked with other couples before. Obviously, if there's good... Um, feedback, if you like, from previous clients, then you can probably find that that DJ is the one to go with. If, they, if there is no previous feedback or people say, oh, yeah, look, it was okay, but wouldn't use them again, obviously you don't have a look at somebody else. Yeah. But that's, yeah, testimonials are very, very important in our industry. And that's, that's how it works, <laughs> word of mouth. Absolutely, yeah. And what about like when you're um, interviewing them on the phone and you're asking your standard questions, what are some telltale signs that um, would sort of raise some red flags for you about those people? Umming and ahhing to start with. You know, if you say, oh, look, can you get me this particular artist from my particular, when I'm coming in through the, into the reception, that's some music that I want. If there are, um, mm, oh, look, I haven't got that, but oh, oh, I might be able to get it for you. I think it's a confidence thing. If you're speaking to that person on the phone and straight away they're saying, yes, not a problem. Yep, I can do that for you. Sure. And if they're asking you questions as well, I mean, what song would you like when you walk down into the reception? What song would you like for your cake cutting? If they're asking you those questions, then obviously they're prepared. They're being prepared and they're going to have everything there for you on the day. Personally, I like to meet with the people. I think putting a face over the phone is one thing. Um, via Facebook's handy as well, but actually meeting the people and seeing them face to face makes their life easier on the day. They know who their DJ is going to be. As soon as he walks in, they go, yes, I know who you are. And you know the couple that you're dealing with as well. Yeah. So if it's feasible, if it's feasible, I know so much going on during that period of time with couples trying to get everything organised for their wedding. But if it's feasible, take the time to meet with your DJ and or MC, have a cup of coffee, discuss what you want face to face. Yeah, there's nothing like that personal rapport, hey? Like Absolutely. Like weddings are all about relationships, family relationships, celebrating mm -hmm. the relationship that you have, but also you're having a working relationship with all the moving parts and pieces, the venue, the florist, the cake, the music, and you know, music sets the feel for everything. So to be able to have a great relationship there is important. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. And, and, and particularly if you're getting someone to MC your wedding as well, if your DJ is also your MC, you, you need to know, that MC needs to know who's who, who's related to who. Uh, you know, Artie, Artie uh, won't sit with this particular cousin because she doesn't like them. I mean, you need to know all those little things. It just makes it so much smoother on the day. Yeah. If, you know, if everybody knows what's going on. And I guess from your perspective, uh, being an MC, like you're being a token 
mo like a, a pseudo family member as such Absolutely. because they're not up there speaking their names, talking mm -hmm. the jokes, um, yep. sharing the stories in, in as best you can, uh, introducing mm -hmm. the people that are going to be sharing the stories. So you need to have a little bit of a a, a momentary input. You know, you get slotted into the family relationship, the family dynamic momentarily. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, yeah. That's very important that you can do that. Again, using examples, I've got a wedding coming up in December this year and I actually met with the young couple that I'm doing the wedding for a couple of weeks ago for a coffee. But even before that, just on the phone, when I was speaking to her on the phone, she said to me and I quote, oh, I'm getting a good vibe from you. I'm pretty sure that this is all going to work for us. And then when I said to her, look, how about we get together, have a cup of coffee, ended up having a coffee with her and, a, and her fiancé and her fiancé's mum. And we all sat down and worked out what we wanted on the day. And at the end of that cup of coffee, we had just about everything was in place that I needed to do for their wedding. I could come home and just put everything down in my book and say, right, this is what they need. I'm planned. And she can put that to one side then. She can say, right, my DJ's taken care of, my MC's taken care of. Now I'll concentrate on flowers and and the caterer and everything else. And But that one's out of the way. And that's what you want. You want to be able to just move on. That's taken care of. Next. Yeah, it gives them that peace of mind that they don't have to worry mm. about that anymore. Yeah. Absolutely. Excellent. Um, so, you know, shoppers, brides, grooms, couples, they get caught up in this big old moving wheel of event management, which for some is their forte and for others mm. is so not. Mm -hmm. And so they can get quite messy. <laughs> Things can get quite messy. They're emotional, they're stressed, they're excited. Everything's foreign, everything's new, and it's all about them. Mm -hmm. And, you know, sometimes they can uh, get caught up in not being helpful to themselves, just yep. through not knowing what to do with it, or, or, or getting a bit over emotional or stressed about things. So if I was to approach you as a bride and I, um, you know, I've got the intention that I want to make this exchange, this relationship, as smooth as possible, Mm -hmm. What how, what can I do as a bride to uh, to ensure that you can give me everything that we talked about? All right, communicate. That's the, that's the biggest thing. It's just to communicate and to remain in communication. I mean, it's okay to ring up your DJ, book your DJ, get that all out of the way, and then think right, don't need to speak to them again. It's always good to touch base with them. A month before the wedding and then again a fortnight before the wedding and a week before the wedding just to say look everything's in place it's all done uh, as any and things will change I mean you may have one particular song picked out that you want on that day for one particular part of that wedding and then you get close to the day and think oh I don't really like that I might change it let your DJ know don't leave it till the day and then go up here and say oh look I've changed my mind I might do this instead because then he's gonna have to try and work around how to bring that song in or he might not have it with him or whatever communicate just communicate just let people know touch base on a regular basis between the day you book and the day so that everybody's up to speed with what's going on and the, the better the communication you have with everybody involved with that wedding whether it be your dj your mc your photographer uh, the people supplying your flowers a whole lot just stay in communication that's the biggest thing you can do and be flexible because nothing ever goes according to plan on the day. I have never, ever done a wedding in my life, Kath, where everything is gone exactly according to plan. Be aware that things will be slightly out of time or slightly out of whack. Be flexible and say, okay, well, we're not going to do that right now. We'll do this. And that's what your DJ and your MC needs to be as well, flexible. Totally, yeah. Well, it's, you know, it's the, you know, it's just the game of life really, isn't it? You have mm -hmm. this idea in your head of how it's all going to go and then someone falls over or something yep. happens or it rains or you know something happens so yes that's exactly right yes so have a contingency plan have a plan b have Absolutely. a plan b just in case and be prepared to go to plan b if you have to and i guess too in that instance like as a bride for me having no experience with the music industry i can't even work my ipod effectively right so <laughs> I, have, I have an issue with itunes that i haven't yet worked out <laughs> It's like I need to be flexible in the way that um, where a, an issue arises and I have to say, Brad, what do we do? And you say, mm -hmm. these are the options. And yes. it's like I have to be flexible of not being in total control of everything every minute of the day, mm -hmm. but trusting the people I've engaged with 
can can lead me in the right direction. You know, there might only be one solution, or there might be three solutions. If there's exactly. only one, yeah. I get a choice. If there's, um, I mean, if there's three options, I get a choice. If there's only one, well, I just have to go with it. You know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think you hit the nail on the head when you said be flexible. Um, I mean, yes, look, it's a stressful day and it's been one of those things where you've built up and you know that the day is going to be stressful. You can't avoid that. Wedding, wedding days are stressful for most people involved. But be flexible enough to know that, okay, if that's not going to work, do we have something else in place that will? Yeah. As you said, it could rain. You may be having an outdoor reception under a marquee and it absolutely buckets down rain. Is there an alternative? Can we go inside? Is there power available for, for the DJ and for the MC? Can we move all that inside with the, the minimum amount of fuss and as smoothly as possible? And, and is your DJ and, and MC flexible enough to say, yes, I can do that? Yeah. No, they're not going to turn around and go, oh, I'm sorry, it's raining, I can't do this anymore. Yeah. No, you've got to have that flexibility. You've got to have that flexibility to be able to do it. And for your DJ MC to be calm enough to just be able to say, look, not a problem, we'll just do this instead. The last thing you need is someone running around going, oh, I don't know what I'm going to do now, I, you know, I can't hook into this music system, what are we going to do, blah, blah, blah. I haven't got a backup plan. Got to have one, yeah. got to have one, got to be flexible. Yeah, and I think we've covered all of this, but it's on the paper, so I'm going to ask. Okay. What makes for a seamless wedding reception in terms of the final product? having all the things that we've just discussed in place beforehand that's the way to do it is to actually have everything in place well and truly before the event before the event as i said i'm doing one now in september that, that she's only just sort of organizing now and we're in early july and she's left it and even speaking to her on the phone you can hear the stress in her voice i've only got six weeks and i've got to be ready for be ready early be ready early like prepare early <laughs> yes six weeks before a wedding and she's booking things. I mean, okay, she's left it a little late, but having said that, when she did contact me, I said, look, it's not a problem. I, I, that date's free, I've got that date free. You leave the music up to me and anything else you need, you just let me know. Yeah. Bang, that's out of the way. But do it early, yeah. do it early. Yeah. Book early and make sure that, and that's the best way to have a seamless day, is to, <clears throat> excuse me, have everything booked in advance, have it all worked out, and have that plan being just in case in the back of your mind, in case the day the weather changes or the venue changes or look I've been to weddings where we've had blackouts in the middle of the reception you'll have a blackout what do you do what do you do I mean all of a sudden the lights are gone the music's gone from my from my point of view I have a, I have a, a um, portable PA that's battery powered we soon had the music back yeah, yeah. and lots of light a few candles when the atmosphere completely changes but I mean you've got to have that that backup plan in place just in case it happens Okay. And uh, I think we've given people a pretty good starting place for those mm -hmm. who haven't done it before or are stressing out over the whole thing. So mm -hmm. thank you so much for your time, your advice and your wisdom. My absolute pleasure. Absolute pleasure, Kath. Awesome. Well, I look forward to talking with you again soon. Yep, absolutely. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks, Brad.